Ledger is a writing podcast and just gross enough to be fun. I'm your host, Austin Wilson. Welcome to today's episode where I chat with the writer, Lore Gislison. They are the author of Inside Out, which is a book of disgusting tales, uh, all linked up to form a novella of the grossest collection of excretions, bodily fluids, tongue piles, all kinds of great stuff. If uh, if those are the things that you definitely want to read about, then you should check out Inside Out. It's out right now from Dark Lit Press. Uh, Laura and I also talk about things that they are working on coming up, uh, a book called Goop Troop, uh, Goop being the sort of summation of Lore's writing style, but the subject matter they kind of gravitate towards, gross, fun stories. Um, uh, Inside Out is definitely one of those as well. We talk about days when you can only write two sentences versus days when you can write three pages and managing expectations when coming to the page and even managing the amount of time it takes between writing something, submitting it, and getting it published. Uh, we talk about their daily writing practices and mental health and a lot of stuff. It's a it's an awesome conversation. I'm glad Lore stopped by. Make sure you check out their work. Um, you can find them on Twitter, or you can go to linktree slash Lore Gislison and find links to everything that Lore does. Uh, I will have a link to that in my show notes as well. If you listen to the show, let me know what you think about it. Uh, as always, I appreciate you being here. Swing by my website, austinrwilson.com, to check out my work. And I also have a link tree where you can find links to everything. The show is now officially a part of the Writer's Bone Podcast Network, which I'm super excited about. So go to writersbone.com and check out the other shows there as well as mine. And check out Lore's books. They have more stuff coming out. Uh, they are also the editor of... Bound in Flesh, an anthology out from Ghoulish Books, uh, body horror, trans, non-binary writers uh, collection, which is pretty awesome. So get, if you, maybe you got it for free when Ghoulish Books gave it away one day, um, but it's also out there to buy. So check that out, and there will be links to that in the show notes as well. But as for now, here's my chat with Laura Gislison. I've read a few interviews with you and read some stuff about what you've been working on and and kind of your history and the thing I saw that I really wanted to jump into and unpack because I've seen you talk about it a little bit is that you started writing in 2020. Yes. And <laughs> as we're talking right now, it's it's May 2023. You've got a novella out called Inside Out. Uh, you're editing the Bound and Flesh anthology and a lot of other stuff that I've that I see that we're, that we're going to talk about. But I'm super interested to know about what your daily writing habit or even if you write daily, what what's your writing, what your writing looks like now when you get to the table where like just guide me through the the process of, of what you do um, and sort of walk me through how you got from 2020 to 2023 and all of this stuff happening for you, because that's it is it is weird to to think about like I guess technically now it's like my my third year anniversary of writing I should do something for that but did you ever uh, did you write before 2020 at all um I wrote like in high school but I don't I don't know if that really counts it's just like you know cheesy high school poems and stuff but um I had a job at like a, a mental health clinic where I ran like support groups and COVID shit canned us and I had a lot of free time on my hands and I downloaded Shudder and watched a lot of horror movies. And I was like, gee, this is a really good movie. Why aren't there any like articles about it? And my friend said, well, maybe you should write some. And I was like, oh yeah, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe I should. And that kind of catapulted me and I started writing articles and then I had a weird dream about people melting and that started my novella and it kind of grew out from there it's it's been very weird to look back on my writing routine is atrocious and nobody should follow any of my advice uh it's either like two sentences or three pages and there's no in between um and a lot of it is like three in the morning i need to get this thought out or else i'm going to forget it or well, that's a cool word. I'll write it down and I'll look at this later. <laughs> I, well, I think the high school stuff absolutely counts. 
it, because it all, you know, is you're using those, those gears, so to speak, where you're, you're writing. Cause I wrote plenty of weird stuff in high school that I was, you know, not sure what I, I, I know what you mean though. You know, there was a part of me that wouldn't have thought of it, of it as like me sitting down to write a story or like seriously thinking about what I would be doing with it just as much as it was fun to do either two sentences or three pages. Is yeah. that, how's that, what's that feel like to you? Does it feel like failure? Feel like success? It's huh. annoying. It's yeah. like, because I do a lot more thinking about writing mm -hmm. than actual writing, which I, I've, people say still counts because you're, you're, you're still using those gears and everything. So it's, it's frustrating because it feels like it's all in there and it's not coming out onto the page. But let's say my my notes for my current project is about twice as long as the actual writing for my current project. So I just need to like translate that into the other language of writing. But I don't know how long that's going to take. So that the the notes and the note taking aspect of, of writing um do you feel like you've been doing things your entire life that ended up rolling over into what you do when you're preparing to write, like taking notes like that? Um, if I asked someone who just see it, even feel, it seems weird to me to say that you started writing uh, three years ago. Um, do you feel do you, does that really how you feel? Yeah, like I, I've always been a, a journaler, but it's just kind of like, you know, personal journals, feelings, stuff that I have a really bad memory. So if I write down what I did that day, it helps. So that's been a lot of it over the years. So I guess that helped in a way. But yeah, I'm also I, I guess the, I guess the word would be I reminisce a lot. So I like go over memories in my head. And a lot of those memories have worked into my writing. So I it's sort of Yes and no. I don't know. It's yeah. it's hard to say. Well, um, the thing I was going to say uh, is if I asked someone who had just started writing, uh, like how they would prepare to write a story, I would be so interested to hear. Um, but you talking about, you know, writing notes and and preparing to write rather than just like jumping in. I'm just so interested in everyone's process, which is, you know, why the show, <laughs> why the show's here. <laughs> But what's the notes? What What's your note taking process like? Is it literally just snippets of dialogue or are you plotting? It's a, how, what it's are you a bit doing? of everything. Like, a little bit of all of it? A lot. I always have like specific sentences that I'm like, I want to put this sentence in the story. And then sometimes the story will like branch out up and down from that sentence. But then I will, I'll read something that I'm like, oh, I really like that. I want to try to do something similar to that. So I'll write it down or a cool word <laughs> I have yeah. for inside out. I have this whole list of really nasty words <laughs> that I tried to fit in in different places. Cause I was like, man, I can't use the word flesh like 20 million times. Right. I gotta, I gotta use a different word, but I also for my current project, which is called um, cosmic dike patrol. I was been doing a lot of research into different philosophies of matter which is complicated and uh i was considering putting a different language into it i haven't decided if i'm going to or not and then sort of like the meanings behind flowers and and it's just like all over the place so we'll we'll see if any of that actually gets into the story but it's that part's kind of fun the word and and planning yeah. What about the the specific story as you're building? Because I really want to talk about Inside Out, the based on story and structure. Because I've seen you describe it as uh, a novella of loosely connected shorts uh, with an overarching story, and I'm super interested in in knowing how you arrived at connecting the 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 stories as you did each each piece, and if there was. I mean, the, the question, obviously, everybody ends up phrasing it one way or the, or the other is, are you a pantser or a plotter? And when you started writing Inside Out, were you just flying by the seat of your pants or was there a plan? I'm absolutely a pantser and I think I always, I always will be. Yeah. So, yeah, I had a weird dream and my dream itself was divided into three different stories. So I wrote down those three stories 
and then I would have another idea for a story and another idea. And they all, they always started as little short stories, but they all kind of felt like they were in the same world because all of these similar things were happening. So I just kept writing more and more. And then when I was putting it together, I actually like totally rearranged them because I realized, oh, I need to have like how it started, um, how it ends kind of thing, which I always wanted to be non-specific about how it happened because I don't feel like that part super matters. I always like the the unknown and the mystery of like, oh, geez, who, who knows how this happened? So I kind of had a couple things that it could be, and you can put it together if you read all of them. But it, I'm, I'm actually having problems now because I'm so used to writing short stories that writing a long narrative is like, wait, how do I do this? <laughs> so I actually am dividing it into... Um, writing from different characters' perspectives for each chapter. So that kind of is helping me put it into smaller bits instead of one whole huge thing. Because it's so, like, uh, I, I don't know, it's too it's too big. I need to make it smaller. Is it literally just trying to, like, sustain a narrative for the, for the length of a, a longer story? Where, because when I was, sometimes when I think about it, I think about the, like, little moments that connect to the bigger moments. And trying to make those seem relevant and memorable, but not stealing from the bigger moments, like because a short story, like those things fly, you know, mm. they're they do their thing and then they're gone. What do you think? Well, one, did you always want to write something longer, or did you write a short thing and then you're like, well, I have an idea that's going to be longer, or is it something that just ended up happening because you had an idea that seemed like it would fit to be longer than a shorter work? Um, I think I always wanted to do something longer. I just wasn't sure how it was going to happen. And almost the stuff that I have been doing the last, weird to say this, last few years may have been stepping stones to get here because um, Inside Out is like really short. They're like some of them are like one or two pages. And then my next thing is... Um, a pirate novella that I wrote with my friend Shelly and it's written as letters. So they can also be a couple pages or a couple more pages and they're divided up. So that kind of is the next step. And hopefully this will be the third step. And then who knows, maybe I'll be able to write something even longer someday. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Do you, I mean, do you have any ideas for like a thing that you're like, this idea seems huge. I'm not ready for it yet. And it could be a longer thing or you literally just don't even know what's what's coming next. I have no idea. I, I never know what I'm doing. Really? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I have like a couple like, wouldn't it be cool if this happened kind of ideas, but nothing like that. Yeah. Big. I think I in the past, I've always struggled with feeling the thing that I was doing was was going to be the finished thing. I've talked to a couple other people about it and. Some writers have said, like, oh, no, I never feel that. Others have said, they do. Are, where do you fall? Like, do you struggle with, as you're drafting, feeling as if you have to get it perfect? Or is it pretty easy for you to say, I'm going to come back to this. It doesn't have to be even kind of okay right now. <laughs> I can I can move past it. Where where do you fall on that on that line? I'm I'm kind of a perfectionist, but I feel like I'm weird compared to a lot of people because... A lot of people go through multiple drafts. I only ever have one draft. It's just I completely like shuffle it around and move things, but it's still the same way that it started. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. Yeah. So I guess everything is technically a first draft. They just go through a lot and a lot, and a lot of edits. Um, I usually don't know where I'm going to end up when I start, but some, I've, I've been trying to outline more. That's my new thing is trying to outline. Well, uh, is there a reason why like did, that you want to change? Cause I'm just so curious why you would want to start outlining. It. I feel like it might help me like figure out what direction I want to go. Like I'm not like super outline. I'm like, yeah. I would like this to happen somewhere. Yeah. I'm not like this needs to happen, this and this and this. It's not like a bullet point. It's just kind of a couple things and I will hopefully fill in the blanks. But it, I don't know. I thought maybe it might help me have a better idea of where I want to go with it. 
Yeah. How do you think you would characterize your writing style? Oh, I don't know. That feels like a weird question. I feel like that's more of people who read. Readers would be the people who would, who yeah, would like say. What it, like, what did you think of it when, when you read my stuff? I thought it was pretty straightforward. I really liked how disgusting it is, <laughs> <laughs> which is a strange compliment. And that's one of the things I want to talk about, because uh, goop being the the big word that is associated with you. And really, I think maybe that's the word I heard before I even knew someone was talking about your work or you were a, as a writer. <laughs> you heard the word I, goop? Goop, yeah. I saw someone you know tweeting about it and I was like, what are they talking about? And then obviously I saw the cover to Inside Out and I was like, oh, holy shit. <laughs> What's this thing? <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's weird because I'm the person who asked the question, but I think I might agree with you <laughs> that that's a better <laughs> question for readers than it is for the writer. But I'm just always so curious how how writers will think of their own stuff, if at all. If I think I think straightforward makes sense. Yeah, I feel like I'm a very straightforward person, so that probably is why. Do you ever worry about writing? And all of these questions are probably you can just everyone could just be like Austin obviously worries about this thing <laughs> about about avoiding the this happened and then this happened and then this happened almost getting into the like rhythm of just of just stating events over and over again. Has that ever occurred to you as something to worry about or? or... I mean, I, I guess a little because a lot of that does happen in my book, people continuously get horrible things happen to them. And I had to keep finding new <laughs> different ways to describe it. Uh, so yeah, I, I guess I do. And I guess my way of working around that is just to find more new gross ways to destroy <laughs> people. <laughs> We had no spoilers, but there are piles of tongues mm -hmm. uh, that appear in the book. Um, so if you're into that, you might dig the book. <laughs> As you're writing, especially on days where it's three pages instead of just like a couple sentences, does it feel like you are blazing through those three pages? How's time feel as you're as you're working through stuff? It's it still feels slow yeah. because I, I will like write a sentence, delete it, write it again. And then uh, for a lot of things, I will send it to, I, I'm so sorry to my like non-horror friends. I send them a sentence and I'm like, what do you think about this? Is this gross? And they're like, that's the worst thing I've ever heard. Yeah, I'm like, cool. That's, that's I'm on the gross. right track. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes I'm like, but what if I made it grosser? <laughs> so that, that part is a little fun. I, I'm, and I'm, a, you know, have a little fun torturing my friends with, terrible descriptions um there were there were some that felt like i did it all in one go and some yeah. of them some of them were like i had to go over it again and again but um i think the the ones where i did all on one go were probably the most fun ones and maybe that hopefully that comes across in them yeah i'm not sure i haven't read it in a while <laughs> Um, have you read it after since it got published? Like, or did you just read it as you were editing it and, and writing it? I I think the last time I read it was when I got like the first uh, proof of the paperback, and that yeah. was a very wild experience. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, earlier you're talking about um, during COVID, you you said you were working. Was that at a mental health um, treatment facility? Yeah, that's really close to my heart. Uh, I struggle with anxiety and depression and, and have you know managed it for most of my life. Do you feel like any of the skills you were using in that role translated over to to writing? I, th I think so, because all of it is talking to people and like getting on the same page as someone who has gone through completely different things from you and it's it's hard it's it was a very difficult job we had uh, mandatory debriefings after every uh session we had because people would tell us the most upsetting things you've ever heard yeah so i think also probably that helped me compartmentalize uh bad things and put them put them on a shelf away yeah. when i'm done but i I'm pretty open about the fact that I'm autistic and I go through a lot of things. So I think that naturally comes across in my writing. I, I have a hard time with dialogue. <laughs> so maybe that's why all of my stuff is just gross descriptions of things, but it's something I'm working on 
And uh, it's definitely something I, I use in my writing, my experiences. Yeah, I think um, one, one of the things you said right there is, is super apt, um, just talking to people and, and hearing other people's perspectives. And it does inform your writing when, when you end up getting to hear so many other people's perspectives. And is that something you are going to continue doing? Um, or are you, have you moved past it now since you've started writing? And I'm always just curious about what people do while they're writing or if they're you only writing. You mean that, that job? That job, yeah. Oh, they they have not been able to go back really because of yeah. COVID. We tried for a little bit to do online classes and it it's just not the same when you don't have that like face, or not face to face, but you know, person to person kind of communication. So uh, yeah, I don't have that <laughs> job anymore, unfortunately. So yeah, I guess I'm technically full time writing um that's cool though <laughs> yeah i mean it's not like full-time money but it is sure. full-time in the <laughs> fact that i'm supposed to be spending my full-time writing yeah the the full-time money thing i think is a pretty rare <laughs> pretty rare situation which it's always so weird to talk about sometimes because at least where i grew up it was you know no one wanted to talk about that about what you did for your job or how much money you made or any of those things. But writing, I've written for so many years and gotten paid nothing. <laughs> it's just like, that's a, a big part of it. Do you write longhand or do you write on computers? Every, anything? What, how do you, how do you do it? I write most of my computer, but also secondarily on my phone because a lot of it will be me trying to fall asleep and then I'll have yeah. an idea. And then I open my, yeah, a lot of it is on my phone. I'm so um, interested in that. I've I just talked to a poet and she was talking about writing on her phone. And for some reason, that's never been a thing that I've gravitated towards. But I'm starting to try to do it so that I can train myself to use. I, I deleted Twitter off of my phone so I can only use it on a laptop now. And now the gesture that I would use to open up Twitter is the gesture that pops my notes open yeah a lot of people do something similar where they get rid of social media and instead they open like their kindle app or their book app and are like well, instead of doing that re i'll read a book which i think yeah. is also great i am addicted to social media so <laughs> unfortunately that doesn't work for me but i think having that it's so instantly there that i can write it down because my memory is so terrible and i if i don't write it down immediately it's it's never going to happen. That really helps. Um, I have a bunch of different documents that are just like ramblings. Um, I can't really write longhand because I have a lot of hand pain. But yeah, I, I used to I used to exclusively write in those like fancy journals you get at bookstores. Yeah. But uh, yeah, over the years, my hands have just really given out on me. So actually writing on my phone or my computer. It helps a bit with that. Do you think social media played a part in the length of stuff that you were writing that you like sort of naturally gravitated towards short stories or shorter form things, or even like the epistolary thing, like you're talking about the, the next books uh, in letters. Do you think that is being informed by using social media or maybe, maybe a bit. And also my short attention span, maybe that's, Maybe that's because of social media. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I've always been big on on Twitter. I, weird to say, but I've been on there for like almost a, over a decade now. Crazy. So you, you would get so used to having your thoughts in that little amount of words. Yeah. I, I do have a part in Inside Out that was directly basically taken from a social media post that I saw also. So I guess, I guess, yeah, I have been. I think it's weird to think about it from this perspective because I hadn't really before now, but I do think Twitter has helped me edit in some ways because I'm like, no, I can say this shorter. <laughs> I can say this quicker. I don't need to say just an ant. Like I can delete these words that I say all the time, but I do worry that it has <laughs> affected my attention span. <laughs> But short books, novellas, short stories, I'm so excited to see a lot of a lot more of that stuff. Or maybe it's not more than normal, but it seems like there are, especially horror short. I, I feel like there are more. 
I think so. Doesn't it seem like it? It seems like mm. there, there are. Yeah. I really like that just because I, it's fun to not have to commit like 500 hours to something that you can have fun with. And I see a book with over like 400 pages now when I'm, I get like tired. I'm like, oh man, that's too much. <laughs> and I see 120 pages and I'm like, okay. <laughs> there we go. That's the one right there. Yeah. So do you, do you gravitate more towards writing things that I think the, do you want to feel something for a character and make people feel something for a character? Because you were talking about you, you're finding ways to go grosser and grosser and grosser. So I'm always, I'm curious what you want out of a story you're writing. Like, is it to just gross people out or are you, is there a broader target? Not that that's a bad target. I don't, I don't think it is, (laughs) (laughs) but I'm just curious. The kind of stuff that I like is gross and fun. So I hope that I have that same feeling come across where you're, you're grossed out, but you're still like having a laugh about it. And I, I think a, a lot of the stuff that I write and read and um, experience is all kind of the same, like movies, hour and a half, a novella, a couple hours. I play a lot of short form horror, uh, horror games, usually like $5 and take you, I don't know, an hour or two. So I feel like all of these things in different mediums have the same vibe and effect but they, you can do them all differently. What um, what are some of your short horror game faves? Oh, there's one called Iron Lung that was really good that came out a while ago. There's another one called uh, No One Lives Under the Lighthouse. That's another one. A Place Forbidden is like a cool, cool library. Very um, otherworldly. I'm trying to open my, my Steam so I can see the list now. I found one on itch called i think it was called the subway you literally are just walking in a subway car as the like lights are flickering and you get to the end and there's a monster that's like the that's the game (laughs) and it was awesome yeah like um the indie horror community for game developers has just been exploding as much as it has for writers so there's just a ton of games coming out continuously both on steam and itch is really good for that too do you want to write a game? I would love to write a game. If somebody is making a game, me too. and they, I just hit me up, I want, to, I want to write a game. There's there's so many awesome ways to get the games out now, and like you said, I, I've noticed the explosion of like that indie community, and I've really loved Dredge. It's not, I don't think it's as short, but it's super awesome. I was so so excited for that game, like when it first got announced. Yeah, and. My entire group of friends were playing it the day it came out. I think I played it for like nine hours and we were all just like, whoa, did you see that? Like it was such a fun experience to discover these things with my friends. And it's just like such a calming game. You're you're just fishing in their weird, gross fish. I'm I loved it. It's one of my favorite games for the past few years, I think. I was pretty shocked to how deep, no pun intended, uh, it ended up being because, well, one, just from the gameplay pr- perspective, like you said, you're just fishing, but there's ends up to be so much more you can do. Like you can read books and your characters gain knowledge and stuff. And I really liked that. And seeing the ways that the, that story was sprinkled throughout it, that's an, that's one thing that I would love to be able to do is write a game where it's like, the story ends up getting dropped in these like almost little morsels as you're going through it. I think that's what appeals to people about a lot of like the Dark Souls games and Elden Ring is that a lot of it is told through items you pick up and descriptions of things and little interactions with characters, which I love those games too. So I think writing that kind of stuff would be really fun. Probably take a long time, but yeah, it, w- it would be fun. So you've got some other stuff you're working on that's coming out. You you mentioned one. Uh, I also saw mention of Goop Troop. Um, <laughs> tell us a little bit about that. So Goop Troop is myself, Eric Raglan, and Shelley Levine. And we've always been uh, more on the extreme side of horror. And a lot of uh, open calls would be like, no extreme horror no graphic violence. And we're like, oh man, but all of my stories have involved that. And and I said, well, what if we just made a collection of, of gross stories? 
And I, I took this to uh, my publisher for Inside Out, uh, Dark Lip Press. And he was like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so we each have a couple of stories that are very, very gross. Uh, and we put them together and we have little introductions to each of them. And I think it turned out super good. And we're almost ready for pre-orders, I think. Um, we... The, the cover is done by uh, my friend Val, and they drew these three pig heads in like a totem. And we loved it. We got the idea as if the stories are being told by this totem, and we called it the Swine Sayer, like the <laughs> Soothsayer. So each story is uh, introduced as like a, a moral thing by one of these pigs. And how how much people kind of suck. <laughs> uh, I have one story that I won't fully give away, but it involves uh, cannibalism of fetuses. Holy shit. Uh, I did not expect that second word. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's... Uh, it, I saw, I, it's a, the weirdest way it came about. I saw a funny meme picture and it turned into a story about that. So hopefully no one will roast me for it. But Well, I'm, that perfectly leads into my next thought, which was, is anything too gross? <laughs> I, I think you kind of already answered it. I mean, I don't, but maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. I see you thinking. Ah. Uh, I feel like that's very subjective because yeah. um, that's another thing that me and Eric and Shelley have always talked about is that um, in comparison to other people, we sort of feel like our, our gross meters are a bit broken because I'll write something like that and I'll be like, I don't know. I feel like I can make this weirder, but it, but to other people or to you, perhaps you'd be like, that's terrible. And you've gone too far, you know? Yeah. It's it, everything is subjective. Like uh, my my mom told me she was going to read my book. She maybe got a chapter two in, and I never heard anything else about it. So I yep. do not I do not think she finished. It. I don't blame her, but uh, yeah, it's just not some 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 people. It's just not for them, and I totally respect that. Yeah, I think the people because you hear. Uh horror authors specifically talk about someone saying like, how could you write something so messed up or like, are you okay? And I think those questions kind of miss the point because it's especially writing something that's fun and gross, like inside out. Like it's not that you're just trying to shock people because it's easy. I think it's the easiest thing in the world is to be shocking, but to do it in a way that is entertaining and, at least memorable for like the fun, because what, what do you think about that? Is it, do you set out to shock people? Is it a byproduct of, of what you do? Um, I think it, I think it's a byproduct. I I'm thinking like the difference between a movie like hostel and the, and the evil dead movies where hostel hostel is like, like it's trying so hard to make you upset and shock you and make you feel bad. And evil dead is like, this is horrible, but it's also very funny. Right. No, I and, think that's perfect. Yeah. And like, there's no, no, uh, what did they, what did people call movies? Like saw like trauma porn or something trauma like porn, Yeah. Yeah. So that it's, there's, there are different things and there's nothing wrong with liking that kind of stuff, but it, it's almost like, depressing after a yeah while? yeah i i i know what you mean i mean when i watch the blob either the original or the the remake like it's it's gross but i'm having fun mm. and shocking me yeah stuff like hostile or or some extreme horror novels i've read where it's just like i don't know man i, I feel like maybe the point has been lost <laughs> when it's just over the top shock um have you ever written anything where you felt like you went off the path somewhere where you're like okay this isn't that fun anymore i need to to reevaluate what i've done here not yet 
but I hope that if I did get there, I would have that that thought and maybe that step back and look at it. Um, but I haven't yet, so we'll see. Do you have anyone who reads with that in mind, or that reads my stuff? Yeah, like not necessarily a sensitivity reader. I guess maybe that could be what it would be called. Somebody to to evaluate because if you think you're your like ability to judge if it's too gross or if you've gone past a point where it's not even going to be read by someone and uh, they'll have fun. Have, do you ever hand it to someone and say, is this the thing that people are finally going to be like arrest lore gets listen. <laughs> well, I did send the, the fetus story to a friend of mine who is a parent and I was like, is this too much? And they were like, no, I think it's okay. So I got the pass on that one. There you go. <laughs> but I do send my my work to my friends for like beta reads and yeah, gr- grammar edits and stuff. So I would hope that if it was, they would they would tell me. Yeah. Um, what else do you have uh, you're working on? You said you do have some other stuff that you're maybe going through uh, that's getting ready to come out or the longer thing is, is that the epistolary novel? Yes, we are going through a million, million different rounds of edits right now. And now it's back to me to do some more editing, but it's gosh, I think we're up to almost 25 K on it. So it's going very well. It is uh, about this guy named Wilford and he wants to prove himself so he goes gallivanting off with pirates and encounters horrible sea creatures and he writes home to his friend and his friend's like that's terrible i need to come rescue you (laughs) yeah uh and the things that happen back and forth between them and uh it got very lovecraftian uh near the end and i'm very i'm very happy with it i'm very happy to have written it with my friend shelly and I'm also working on Cosmic Dyke Patrol, which is my uh, queer Ghostbusters cosmic horror novella. That is that sounds awesome. <laughs> ho- hopefully, hopefully people <laughs> like it. Uh, and I have a couple of short stories I'm working on for various calls, but uh, nothing concrete. Yeah. I always like to talk about energy levels, like when you sit down to write and making yourself write, if you ever feel like you have to make yourself or if it's, I know we talked about, you know, sometimes there's a two sentence day or a three page day because I, I get so many different answers because normally as I've gone longer on in my writing life, some days it's like torture. Is that ever, or is that the two sentence day for you? Yes, and I I get so frustrated. Is that a yeah. cat? It, it is, yeah. <laughs> uh, I have a kitten. Her name's Birdie, and she Aww. is an, a little ball of energy. <laughs> Just rocketing around the room right I'm, now. I'm very thankful that my cats are both sleeping right now, because otherwise that would be them. But they are, like, right next to me. <laughs> yeah, I was actually writing right before we, we hopped on here, and Birdie, we literally got her like three weeks ago. Oh, she's still Um, a little baby. Oh yeah. She's under a year old. So she's, she is, she's learning the house and getting comfortable. And we started to get into this little routine where she'll like come and tap on my, my thigh and I'll like turn and then she'll jump up onto my lap and then jump into the window and then she'll sit in the window while I write. Um, that's so cute you have a little writing buddy i've taken like five hundred thousand pictures of her in the the window (laughs) good um i'll send you one on twitter you'll see i'll send you a picture i have my one cat is 12 and i only have maybe a dozen pictures of her as a kitten and i'm i regret it so much so i have 20 million pictures of my other cat as a kitten and i just i want to hold on to it forever but yeah but your question I, about um, oh yeah energy levels torture so, yeah my energy <laughs> levels are usually torture yeah and i i need sometimes i need a friend to like yell at me and be like you need to sit down and get stuff done so um that and i think i just need to take my <laughs> my adhd meds more D-meds. yeah so i have that actual focus but i have been trying to 
get into a, some kind of routine where I'm like, these couple hours, if I can write, that'd be great. If not, I can work on, I don't know, answering emails or general, that kind of stuff. So at least I'm getting something done. But it's also a little difficult because Zelda just came out. So I might oh my, fo- <laughs> my focus You've... is entirely tapped. <laughs> Seriously, my wife and I have been... I, we both just got amiibos so we can put the amiibo and get like fish and all kinds of stuff to, to give us. But um, if you're comfortable talking about the mental health aspect of, of writing, we can, if you don't want to cool, I struggle I'm, with, I'm it. Fine with it. Um, that's one thing that I, I've had to learn how to balance is my anxiety and my depression and through medication and therapy, you know, I've, um, I've gotten to a place where it seems okay. Is that, how do you how do you uh, kind of like balance everyday life, the things that you deal with and writing is writing all, always secondary because I beat myself up a lot and kind of labor under this weird guilt. Oh, absolutely. I do that. Yeah, um, I have had mental health struggles basically my entire life, which is weird to think about. I yeah. can remember I can remember things from being like five years old, ten years old, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's I have a lot of trouble with self-confidence and self-doubt. And I'm like, sure, I wrote a book, but what if it's terrible? And what if people are just being really nice to me? Yeah. And like I think that's part of what has been holding me back from my current project, is I'm like what if this actually really sucks? So I, I, me and a couple of friends have started a workshop group where we send each other snippets of our work and feedback each week. And they all really, and they all really liked it. And that made me feel better. But now I'm back where I started where I'm like, okay, but what if the next bit is terrible? Yep. (laughs) So I think it's just, it's just going to be a lifelong issue and some days i have a day where i just am completely defeated and it's nothing's gonna happen but i whenever somebody says something nice about my writing or me i take a screenshot or i write it down and on those bad days i try to go through those and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but to have that and to know that there are people that care about me sometimes that really just gets me through a tough I'm day. So, I'm so happy you said that. I I have a pep talk folder and it's literally just, hey, I'm feeling down. I'm going to dip into the pep talk folder and it's that yeah. stuff. And it really is important, I think, to, to remember everybody's working on something and going through something and, and maybe struggling more than it seems like. Even like when I'm playing... I. Um, there's a comic book writer and artist named Marion Churchland, uh, whose work I love. Um, and one time Marion online, I might've been on Patreon talking about playing dragon age and using the same storytelling mechanisms while playing dragon age. And that was a way to like get past the guilt of not being working on comics or, or writing something and that. I really carried that with me for a while uh, where it's like, okay, I'm struggling with this thing right now. I'm just going to think about this 15 to 20, maybe 30 minutes of Zelda that I'm playing and make up stories about whatever I'm doing in a way that would be using that same muscle almost. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it helped me. Also, I talked to somebody previously. uh, I I think it was Evie Knight. We were talking about that feeling of being like, are they just being nice to me? And the conclusion we came to is that publishers don't do that. <laughs> publishers are not just like, you know what? I think I'm just going to publish a book to be nice. Uh, yeah, who's you out know, there? That's, a, that's a good point. But also my publisher is a fellow Canadian and we are often known for just being nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, I mean, I have heard that and you're very nice. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think I don't think publishers uh, operate that way. That, that's yeah, just not a good yeah. business choice. <laughs> yeah. But I definitely understand the fear because that's a thing I internalize a lot, too. And I do always have my one friend like poking me in the butt and like because um, my book actually went through two publishers 
that and got dropped before it was picked up for the third time and published and they're like not everyone can do that and and then i have a, a little cry <laughs> and keep going throughout my day so yeah let's talk a little bit about failure um <laughs> because it's i feel like it's a part of writing just like it's a part of life and when that happened we don't have to go into the publishers or, or what happened or anything but maybe just more how you felt and thought about the the book and the journey from getting it there to to at darklit how did you manage the the internal journey of losing two publishers i felt completely defeated and wanted to give up immediately yeah um i thankfully had a coincidental group uh, zoom call like the next day after it got dropped and everyone was like no you have to you have to send it back out to people um and the second time uh, they they closed so a bunch of people got dropped and a kind of people on twitter were like hey you know send us your your manuscript if you are, were dropped by so and so so that kind of gave me a little bit of confidence to send it to a bunch of different people and uh, I continued to edit and work on it so that I hopefully would make it the best it could be and just trying to to focus on that instead of the fact that it failed really uh, just to just to keep me going otherwise I think I just would have collapsed forever yeah were, were you writing other stuff when when all of that was happening no i was entirely focused on on inside out that was like my life yeah so i think i probably could have used something else to work on and take my mind off it but yeah i mean it sounds like maybe you learned going forward to do that you have a lot of stuff you're doing right now um yeah probably too much stuff <laughs> i think <laughs> i have i i think i have a problem with taking on too much work to make up for lost time or something yeah i think i probably have a problem with waiting mode which sounds like the what you were in with inside out where i'll be i'll get excited about a thing and, and get latched on to okay this thing's gonna happen and then my brain shifts to like all right let's wait on that instead of actively working on stuff i th i think it doesn't help that the publishing world is a lot of waiting Oh my it gosh. is infuriating to me yep. to submit to something and they'll be like, okay, well, we'll get back to you in six months. What? <laughs> like, that is a ridiculous amount of time. I need to know right now. <laughs> yep. I needed to know before I hit send. Mm -hmm. I, if you could just preempt me sending. It is weird, though, uh, in publishing. I've done comic book work and, and prose stuff, and it seriously seems like it's a miracle anytime a book comes out whether it's published on time late or early it's just like holy shit how did this happen because there's so many moving parts and like you said it is so freaking slow and it's weird that technology hasn't sped it up any no i think in some ways it's probably made it slower because now it has <laughs> to go through all these different channels yep well, this has been awesome. Thank you for chatting. Where can people find you uh, online, find your work? I have a Twitter, uh, Lorelei underscore L-O-R-E-L-L-I underscore. And then all of my general links are in my pins and all there. I have uh, a blog, which is lauragislison.wordpress. And uh, yeah. You just Google my name and I'm sure all of my weird websites will come up. Check out Inside Out. Amazing cover. Totally disgusting stories inside for you to have fun with. Laura, thank you so much for coming by. Thank you. Go and check out Bound in Flesh, the anthology that Laura edited is out now from Ghoulish Books. Make sure you also check out Inside Out. It is a disgusting romp. I guarantee you, you'll read something and be like, holy crap, that was really gross. That's out now from Darklit Press. Check that out too. Like I said, links in my show notes for everything that we mentioned. Thank you so much to Lore for coming by. Thank you to you for listening. 
and watch out for new episodes. There's a lot more coming. I have some scheduled for this month, for next month, for the month after that, and one I already recorded that'll be out at the end of July. Keep your eyes open for that and a lot more stuff I have planned in the future for Ledger. Again, don't forget to check out my links and my link tree, my website, austinrwilson.com, the Ledger Discord server, ledgeronwritersbone.com, and my bookshop.org affiliate link where you can buy books from everyone who's been featured on the show if their book's available on bookshop.org and support the show uh, through that affiliate link. I really appreciate you giving me your time. Thanks. Thank you.